And joining me live now is the CEO of Powerlink, Paul Simhauser. Paul, uh, thanks for your time this morning. Appreciate uh, you getting up nice and early for us. So what is the risk of blackouts this morning? Uh, look, the, uh, the power system itself uh, going into this morning looks like there's, there's adequate uh, generation capacity available. Um, uh, electricity demand in, in Queensland is down a little bit on, on forecast that we had yesterday. Going into the, uh, this evening, it'll, it'll start to tighten up again. But, but uh, at this stage, uh, at least uh, in, in the Queensland region, we're not anticipating mm. uh, that we'll have um, uh, any shortfalls. Okay. Um, oh, oh. So, sorry, sorry. So because you, you had anticipated short shortages last night, um, but that hasn't materialised. So why was that, Paul? Uh, look, there's a combination of things. On the demand side, uh, there was a, um, I guess, a, a, a visible reduction relative to where forecasts were, and there's a, a quite a lot of work done by uh, the Energex and Ergon teams up here in, in Queensland. They're the, the two local distributors. They've got a, a, a fair bit of load. They're able to uh, to regulate uh, under those acute conditions, and, and I, I guess the call out to, to households and businesses um, had its effect as well. So that helped. Mm. And then on the supply side, the market operator um, was able to direct a number of generators. That's pretty normal in, in uh, market conditions where you see that you know the price being capped. There are some generators who are actually uh, have got you know running costs above that price cap, so they won't naturally sort of put their hands up to run at a loss. Uh, our email are able to step in and, and issue sort of you know directions to them, which just al allows those generators to operate on a break-even basis. That you know they're not they don't profiteer out of it, but, but they're, they're not also incurring hard losses uh, as a result of running. So the combination of those two things uh, ensured that you know the power system was in a secure state. Okay. So before I interrupted you before, Paul, um, you, you're talking about the threat moving forward. Has it passed yet, or are you expecting another? Is there another worrying surge ahead? Look, the the, um, the the one thing that that I can spot on the screens at the moment uh, when we're looking at our forecast for demand and supply, it does look tight again in in both um, Queensland and New South Wales. And I think if either either state was, um, you know, uh, facing a, a tight conditions, it'd be okay. When both of them are, obviously, um, you know, there's a little bit more heightened awareness in the control rooms around the around both states. Um, once again, though, um, there'll, there'll be a series of directions issued which will um, lift uh, supply. And, and, and as with last night, I guess we just ask households, you know, when they're, when they're putting on their, their air conditioners on a reverse cycle, um, uh, just to not set them at blast furnace mode, if they can just keep the, keep the temperature gauges around the 18 to 20 degrees C, it'll knock the, it'll knock the, uh, the edge off the weather, save a few dollars on the way through and, and make sure that uh, you know, demand doesn't, doesn't uh, rise too high. It's not unusual at this time of year for for you know demand to, to obviously to stiffen up a bit. What is a bit unusual is we've, we've got a uh, you know, number of generators on scheduled maintenance, a couple that are doing running repairs, and it's the running repairs that we probably uh, don't anticipate. Right. Uh, so there were some outages in you know, Sydney's northern beaches last night. Does that surprise you at all? Look, I don't. I'm not sure what actually happened uh, in, in Sydney's northern beaches last night. Whether it was a sort of a bulk supply system or it was a localised uh, event, I, I'm just I can't can't see through the uh, the network into New South Wales. I can only really see what happens up here in oh, Queensland. No. So that so that could have been just an isolated incident, unrelated. Yeah, it's really hard to know, and and, and you pretty much need to, to you know sort of check in with you know the transmission and distribution network operators and AEMO to to uh, ascertain exactly what the nature of that outage was. Hmm, okay, uh, so just a final point here on the further supply reserve shortfalls. Uh, can you elaborate on that? So uh, the key thing at, at the moment in the marketplace is that you know there are a, a large number of coal generators that are out um, undertaking maintenance at the moment. Um, the, the generators who pick up the slack in that circumstance tends to be, uh, you know, the gas-fired generators. Um, I'm sure you're aware the gas market's going through its own sort of strains at the moment. Most gas generators have, you know, long-term supply contracts that will protect them from those very high prices under normal operating conditions. But when they're asked to produce more and more, eventually the limits of their of their long-standing contracts start to, mm. to, to uh, be exhausted, then they have to step into those spot markets to top up. And right now, of course, the spot markets are, are at very high levels because of those uh, international forces that I'm, I'm sure you're all too well aware of. Yeah, we are. So it's really, it's really a combination of things that's leading us to the current set of circumstances. Yeah, uh, and, and look what, yeah and, and look, what I can tell you is that, you know, right up and down the electricity supply chain, you know, everything that can be done is being done. You know, there's uh, 
a lot of people out there working hard to uh, to make sure that we uh, you know we keep the lights on. Okay, Paul. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll talk to you again soon.